right. God bless you tonight, my brothers, sisters, and friends. We want to thank and praise God for this opportunity to come before you once again. Truly, God is good in his mercy and do it forever. We thank God for being yet saved and having a mind to live for him in these last and evil days. We're coming back tonight. We want to talk a little bit tonight about Carlton Pearson and his followers versus the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's take our Bibles tonight and let's turn to St. John chapter 3 and we're going to start at verse 13. Now we touched on this a few weeks ago and I was somewhat hesitant in talking about this subject because Carlton Pearson uh, was on his deathbed or he had just passed away. And so we touched on it just a little bit. So we want to come back tonight and we want to talk about it because we have to understand that Carlton Pearson was a false teacher. He was a false prophet. See, we got to call, we got to call it out. If you are a false teacher and a false prophet, we're going to call you out or call that person out. Now, hallelujah. Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. We have a lot of preachers today behind the pulpits have not been sent, anointed, or appointed by God. They just went out on their own. And we have some who start out preaching the truth, but they turn from the truth. Now we have to ask the question, did Carlton Pearson start out preaching the truth and he turned from the truth, or did he ever have the truth? Did he ever believe the truth? Was he ever saved? See, that's what we got to ask. We got to ask that question. Did he ever know God? Did he ever know God? It's really strange how he was preaching about God, and all of a sudden, he turned to start preaching against God. So, was he ever saved, or did he backslide and turn from God? Now, I do believe that a person can backslide. But now, you know, I told you all a few weeks ago that if Carlton Pearson was a reprobate, he was, he was not going to repent. The chances are that we were not going to see him repent that he would continue to preach what he was preaching. And even though he's, he was on his deathbed, he was still not going to repent. It appears that he did not repent. It appears that he did not repent. He continued to preach that same doctrine, that same teaching. Hallelujah. And it was not of God. He turned against God. He did not believe that the Bible was the true inspired word of God. He had a lot of bad things to say about the Bible and about Christ and about God. Hallelujah. So you cannot be a follower of Christ and be a follower of Carlton Pearson. In other words, you can't believe that Carson, that Carson Pearson was preaching the truth, that he was of the truth, and that he went into the heavens. Because nobody preaching that kind of doctrine cannot go into the heavens. You cannot be a child of God preaching that kind of doctrine. Preaching New Age doctrine. Because that's what it was. You see, my Brothers, sisters, and friends, we're living in the last days. We are living in perilous times. Not only are we living in times that are dangerous to us physically, but we're living in times that are dangerous to us spiritually, which, which is the most important thing. Our spiritual life, eternal life, is more important than this natural life. What does it profit a man or woman if he or she should gain the whole world and lose his soul or his or her soul? You see, 
the greatest profit that you can have is when you have been born again, when you know the Lord Jesus Christ, when you are saved and you when you are going into the heavens because you believe on the name of Jesus and you believe that that is the only way by which you can have eternal life. It's not Jesus plus anybody else. It's not Christianity plus any other religion. No, it's Jesus or else. And Carlton Pearson did not believe that it was Jesus alone. He preached that it was Jesus and Mohammed, Jesus and Buddha, Christianity plus other religions. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the only way to God. There are not different roads to heaven. There are not other ways to heaven. Jesus is the only way to God. He's the only way to heaven. And so if you are over here and you believe that, uh, we believe over here that there are many ways to God and that there are, there are uh, more ways to heaven than through Jesus Christ, I suggest that you, uh, you know, you move on because we don't believe that garbage over here. We believe what the Bible teaches. We believe that the Bible is the true unadulterated, inspired word of God. Hallelujah. And if you believe that the Bible is the word of God, it's inspired by God, it was written under the inspiration of God, God inspired man to write the Bible, then you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong if you believe in the Bible and you don't let someone come along and shake your faith. Get you to believing in another way. All right? No, hold to the truth. We've been talking about it in the last week or two. Hold to the truth. Hold to the word of God. Don't let anybody come along and shake your, shake your faith. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody get you out of the way. Jesus is the way and he is the only way. There are not many paths or many ways to God. There is only one way to God. And that message that Carlton Pearson preached and left here to be preached does not teach or preach that Jesus is the only way to God. It's a message of there are many ways to God, that the Christian way is not the only way. Well, I suggest to you and I say to you that the Christian way is the only way. Jesus is the only way by which we can get eternal life. And if you leave this world without knowing Jesus, you're going to be in for a big surprise. You're going to be up the creek, so to speak. All right? So let's take our Bibles tonight and turn to St. John chapter 3, verse 13. St. John chapter 3, verse 13. Now, Carlton Pearson taught that there is no hell. He taught that the Bible was not the true inspired word of God. He taught that there are many ways to God. Um, he taught uh, about a shift in the universe. He put all the emphasis on the universe. We are not to put emphasis on the universe. We are to put emphasis on the one who created the universe, who's, who runs the universe. All right? Hallelujah. Our salvation is not in the universe. The universe is not shifting. The world is shifting. And when I said the world, I'm talking about the people that don't know God. All right? And those that are falling away from God. They are the ones that are shifting. The universe is not shifting. God has the universe in control. It's doing just what God wanted to do. But the world is shifting. That's why they're trying to get us to accept homosexuality and all of these other things that they're trying to get us to accept. See, it's the world that's shifting, not the universe. So you avoid these people who are 
using the word these words universe and vibration and frequencies energies and uh, new thought and new age and all that kind of garbage run from those folk all they want to talk about is a shift in the universe vibrations frequencies energy that's new age teaching that's new thought See, there is no difference between new age and new thought. All of that is the God of this world. All of that is trying to turn you from the God of the Bible. You must understand that that is the God of this world system. That is the devil. That is the Antichrist system. That is the new world order. Hallelujah. These people are trying to turn you away from the true and the living God to that false God, Satan, the God of this world. Hallelujah. They want to bring in something new. Don't grab hold to anything new. Hold on to what you have already been taught. And the very fact that you have gotten Jesus on the inside. See, you have him. You already know the way because you have the way. If you've been born again, if you have truly been born from above, hold to that because we're living in the last and evil days and we're going to see more and more of this. Hallelujah. We're going to see more and more of this. People, churches, preachers, Blind guides, the blind leading the blind, folk are going to turn away from the truth. And all of those that are following Carlton Pearson, following his teaching, getting on here, getting on uh, the internet, the YouTube, talking about the church did him wrong, those folk are false. They don't know Christ. God didn't call them. God didn't send them. God didn't appoint them. Run from them. You cannot be a follower of Carlton Pearson and be a follower of Christ because he was not a follower of Christ. Hallelujah. All right, St. John chapter 3, verse 13. We hope you have your Bibles and we hope you have turned to St. John chapter 3, Verse 13. Hallelujah. All right, this is what it says. It says, And no man had ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So Jesus Christ ascended up to heaven on his own power, and he came down from heaven. Now he ascended up to heaven and he came down to heaven and he ascended back up to heaven. Hallelujah. All right. So he said, No man had ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And we know that Jesus Christ is in heaven now at the right hand of the Father. All right, look at verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now we know that back in the Old Testament that the people were given a chance to live by looking up to the serpent that Moses instructed them to look up and live. And those that look, looked up at the serpent lived, but those that didn't died in the wilderness. So just like the serpent was lifted up, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was lifted up on the cross. And only those that look to him, only those that look up to Jesus Christ, will live or are living. So if you have looked up to Jesus Christ by accepting him, accepting him as your Lord and Savior, by being born again, then you are living, then you have eternal life. 
Hallelujah. So you hold to that. Hold to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All right. So he said, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. If you have looked it up and gotten eternal life, you will not perish. You must believe in Jesus Christ alone. Not Jesus Christ plus anybody else or anything else. Jesus Christ alone. Jesus Christ is the only someone that can get you to the Father. The only way you can get to the Father, you got to come by the Son. That's the only way that you can have eternal life. This kind of teaching that Carlton Pearson taught is the God of self. See, it's the God of you. Look within you, what you can do. See, you don't get salvation by looking at you. There's nothing good about you. See, they want to magnify the goodness that's in you. Well, there is no goodness that's in you. Hallelujah. It's not the goodness of you, it's the goodness of God. And the goodness of God has to be put in you through the Son of God. By the Son of God. So if you have any goodness in you, it's because it's been put in you by God through Jesus Christ. So it's not about you, it's about Him that's in you. What you have is not because of who you are, but it's because of who He is. It's not because of what you have done, but it's because of what he has done. Hallelujah. So you, you cannot be saved and have Jesus Christ living in you and on your way to heaven talking about the God of you. Uh-uh. It's not the God of you. It's not you. It's him. Hallelujah. All right. So... <clears throat> He said that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So you have no eternal life outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must believe in him. And not only must you believe, you must continue to believe. See, you must continue to believe. So if Carlton Pearson believed in the beginning, if he believed in the beginning. See, I have some questions as to whether he really believed in the beginning. Because I've always had some doubts. Years and years ago, my wife and I were talking about how we heard him on one of his videos talking about how the, the Lord used to work with the saints of God, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost used to work with the saints of God. They would be under the power of the Holy Ghost and they would be purging some of them. And he said, uh, I heard him make a statement saying, and I was saying, Lord, please don't purge me. And I asked my wife, did you hear that? I became very suspicious then of him. Because everything God wants to do to me, I want him to do it to me. Whatever God wants to do in my life, whatever God wants to do in my life, he is free to do so. He has my permission to do so. Hallelujah. Because I'm his child. And, I, and I'm under his control, under his power. So I don't tell God what not to do to me. He has my permission to do what he want to do to me and with me and in me. So I have a question, you know, as to whether he was ever saved in the beginning. If he were saved, then he turned from the Lord. He left the Lord. He backslid. All right? And he began to preach another gospel, a damnable gospel, a gospel that would take you right into hell, a gospel that is going to cause a lot of people to be lost because he left a lot of his uh, disciples here. And all of you preachers and pastors that are out there talking about the church did him wrong, you don't know the Bible and you haven't been sent and called by God. You just went on your own. You are ignorant of the word of God. 
we did, the church did just what it's supposed to do to people who turn against God, turn against the word of God. A heretic. Heretics. People who turn away from God. Say that Jesus is a liar. Call Jesus a liar. Call the word of God a liar. Or call the word of God a lie. Call Jesus a liar. Hallelujah. All right, now let's look at verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So you can't have any everlasting life without believing in him. And if you say you believe in Jesus Christ, you see, that's, that's what the devil does. The devil will always mix truth with a lie. He always would mix, will mix truth with a lie. Because that's the only way he can deceive people. He got to throw in some truth. So this gospel of inclusion, this gospel of Carlton Pearson, mixes truth with a lie. They'll use the name of Jesus. They'll use biblical terms. But they'll also use New Age terms. All right? They'll use terms that are contrary to the Word of God. They'll use lies that are contrary to the Word of God. Teachings that are contrary to, to uh, sound doctrine. Hallelujah. So you have to be aware of that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It is God the Father who gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Perish means here, not graveyard dead, but in the lake of fire. You will perish in the lake of fire if you don't believe in God's begotten Son, His only begotten Son. Now, the gospel of, of inclusion says that you will not perish in the lake of fire. But the Bible here says that you will perish in the lake of fire. So who, you, who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe Carlton Pearson, who is a mere man? Are you going to believe God? Which one are you going to believe? The Bible teaches that there is a lake of fire. There is a lake of fire. You know, I told you before, if there is no lake of fire, then we have no choice. And if we have no choice, then we're all robots. Hallelujah. We know that we're not robots. And we know that we have a choice. The Bible say, tells us, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. You choose. Behold, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, let him open up. See? Your choice. Your decision. You decide as to whether you want to open up. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So God did not send his son into the world to condemn us. We were already condemned. The world was already condemned by disobedience. Obeying the word of God. Adam brought that condemnation on all of us. So God didn't send Jesus here to condemn us. He sent Jesus here to save us. So that the only way you're going to be saved. <coughs> excuse me. The only way that you're going to be saved. You're going to accept. Have to accept what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. That's the only way you're going to be able to have eternal life. It is the God 
of the Bible. Not the God of you, not the God of self. Hallelujah. So it's not about this spiritual awakening. It's not about an awakened life. It's about a, a renewed life. A life in Christ. Hallelujah. It's not about this new age and this new thought, which is the same thing, just a different name. It's all a lie. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So let's be aware of that. Let's hold to the word of God. Let's hold to the truth. Because the God of this world, the devil, is deceiving people. He is a great deceptor. And he's going to cause a whole lot of folk to hit hell. So let's stay in the faith, stay in the word, and hold to the truth. And we're going to stop right here. This is going to be part one, and we're going to come back. And we're going to continue this lesson talking about Carlton Pearson followers versus Jesus' followers. We'll see you on the next video.